Pikmin 4 has a lot of enemies, both in quantity and in quality. And a lot of these enemies have been with the franchise for a long time. But for every iconic and relevant Red Bulborb and Fiery Blowhog, you have those few enemies that have been completely lost to time. So follow me as we take a trip down memory lane exploring every enemy that didn't make it in to Pikmin 4. What's up guys, it's Name Cody here, and yeah, even though the intro's over, I'm required to say that. Before we begin, I thought it could be a fun game for everyone to comment the number of enemies they believe will be on this list, and then I can head down there and laugh at you all after pulling technicalities there's no way you could have predicted. But let's not waste any time here and just get straight into the enemies that first appeared in Pikmin 1, and for some of these guys, the last time they appeared. So let's begin where it all began. Number 1, the Gulix from Pikmin 1's Impact Site. The Gulix was one of technically four bosses in the original Pikmin, and the only enemy capable of giving the watered effect to Pikmin, but was completely unnecessary to beating the game. It only appears starting on day 9 and continues to appear only on odd numbered days after that, so it's easily avoidable. And when killed, the Gulix doesn't drop a corpse or a ship part. No, only some pellets, which sure are in cheap supply at the impact site. Some of you may recognize this name though from Pikmin 4's Foolix with an F, the only other member of the Gulix family in mainline Pikmin. So even though the Gulix itself has passed on, there will always be a piece of it in the Piklopedia. As for why the Gulix didn't appear in Pikmin 4, probably because... It's kind of bad. The Gulix unfortunately is easy and pointless in Pikmin 1, and the only thing that makes it unique is its strange day-dependent rarity that I've described, which a number of enemies featured in Pikmin 1 and 2. But all of them were removed by the time Pikmin 3 came around. And Pikmin 4 seems to follow the new way in that regard, removing the same specific day mechanics surrounding the Smoky Prog. So without that rarity, the Gulix isn't anything special, and so it's become the first boss truly left behind. And from one boss to... often considered bosses by fans. Nothing in the game, technically. A normal enemy! Number two, the Armored Cannon Beetle from Pikmin 1's Forest of Hope and Distant Spring. I can already hear your comments. Name Coyote, this was one of the enemies we explicitly saw in the trailers. I fought this guy in Pikmin 4. But... You actually have not. Despite the fact that both bosses look almost exactly the same and act perfectly similar to each other, you see those little horns right there? That makes it a different species called the Horned Cannon Beetle. Because Olimar made a mistake when he was naming things? Yeah, I don't know why this changed, but this technicality keeps the Armored Cannon Beetle as a Pikmin 1 exclusive. Despite the fact that major design changes were made to other enemies without even a mention, the Armored Cannon Beetle just doesn't get that privilege. Anyway, I don't really need to describe this one because it's exactly the same boss as the one in Pikmin 4, but in a way, it's, it's literally not for some reason. Reason, leaving us with an armored cannon larva that can never grow up and a horned cannon beetle that skipped being a child. If only there was some way we could bring the two together. And from tough enemy encounter to... Boss. Number three, the beady long legs from the Forest Naval and Pikmin 2's Citadel of Spiders, among other places. As you may have noticed, the beady long legs had a slightly longer run than the two enemies we've talked about previously, because this boss also appeared in Pikmin 2. Sadly, though, when it was time for Pikmin 3, the beady long legs was replaced by the baldy long legs to fit the new shaggy long legs concept. And despite the sprawling family tree, only one of these guys made it back into Pikmin 4, and it was the Baldi version. And this makes sense. The Baldi Long Legs is the newer, more polished design, and it fits in better with the brand new Groovy Long Legs. So there's no reason to have both of them in the game, and I think they chose the right one. And though it ends in tragedy for the BD Long Legs, it is the greatest achievement of a teacher to enable his students to surpass him. And with three enemies down, that's technically the final enemy from the original Pikmin that isn't in Pikmin 4, but there is a quick shout out to do. Number four, Mushroom Pikmin from Pikmin 1's Forest Naval. 20 years ago, back when the Puffstool wasn't influenced by cool, edgy trends, his spores didn't just make Pikmin dance around him in a trance. Instead, they turned Pikmin into evil mushroom Pikmin that attacked Olimar, and then... I 
I think, just died. Unfortunately, though the Puffstool gloriously returns for the first time in Pikmin 4 and gets himself a new family member, the Mushroom Pikmin making spores are long gone and replaced with disco juice. It's honestly a terrible shame that this happened, and I can't say I fully understand the purpose of bringing back the Puffstool without what made it unique, but I guess Nintendo saw some point to it still. Technically though, not enemies, so let's move on before anyone edits their comment to some honorable mentions. A, the Spotty Bulborb, the original name for the classic red Bulborb. B, the Yellow Wallywog, and the Wallywog, which was the American specific name for the enemy for the first three Pikmin games. But in Pikmin 4, they decided to name them the Wally Hop and Yellow Wally Hop, respectively, which is what they were always called in Europe. And for the record, they're just called potato frogs in Japan. ND or B3, the Wogpole, which is now the Walpole. Same thing happened to this guy, though I'm personally very offended by this one for some reason. That's everything in the original Pikmin, though, so let's hit the next game. Pikmin 2 introduces absolute troves of enemies, resulting in quite a few of them being thrown out in Pikmin 3, but which ones still weren't brought back for Pikmin 4? Starting off with one of the first enemies you see in Pikmin 2, number 5, the Snow Bull Borb from a bunch of caves, but particularly the Emergence Cave. The Snow Bulborb is a version of the Dwarf Bulborb that functions exactly the same, but looks like it's maybe a little snowy. Given the fact that Ice Pikmin and Ice Hazards were introduced in Pikmin 4 and the Snow Bulborb has absolutely nothing to do with either, despite its name, he ends up seeing no use in the game. Instead, we have the Dwarf Frosty Bulborb, which is an actual ice enemy and not just a fancy name. Number 6, the Hairy Bulborb. This is just the snowy version of the Red Bulborb, except this one gets hair, which does nothing. Again, this version is virtually useless with the introduction of the Frosty Bulborb in Pikmin 4. No need to have an ice enemy without an ice attack. Happy birthday! Number seven, the Cloaking Burrow Knit. The easiest way to describe the Cloaking Burrow Knit is to call it a budget joust mite. In a similar situation to the beady long legs, Pikmin 3 created the joust mite as a more polished and thought out take on the enemy concept for the face and suddenly do this with no explanation. These guys were all over the place in Pikmin 2, but due to the better and more appliable design of the Joust Mites, having flighty Joust Mites pre-made and all, the Burrownit didn't make the cut for Pikmin 4 and remained locked in Pikmin 2. They are still very much visible in the background of Super Smash Bros, though. Number 8, the Ravenous Whisker Pillar from wherever you find burgeoning spider warts. The Ravenous Whisker Pillar is one of the more forgettable and obnoxious enemies in Pikmin 2. It used to climb up the ultra bitter and ultra spicy spray yielding plants and eat the berries before you could harvest them. They were cut in Pikmin 3 for a good reason. They absolutely suck. Nobody likes them. In addition, Pikmin 3 and 4 just have less focus on the burgeoning spider wart. They're not as valuable as they were in Pikmin 2, especially with how common a drop ultra spicy nectar seems to be in the newest game. This enemy does squirm while being carried to the onion, though, so... That image in my head will probably never fade, even though we'll never see these guys again. Moving on, let's keep things interesting with the speed round theme, Dweevils. Number nine, the Mung Dweevil, were the poisonous variant of Dweevil back in Pikmin 2. But by Pikmin 4, the poison hazard had taken on a new aqua color, so the purple Mung Dweevil was retired and replaced by the Venom Dweevil. Though, poison was red in Pikmin 2, so the Mung Dweevil never, never really worked. Failure. Number 10, the Caustic Dweevil, is a Dweevil that Wikipedia tries to convince me never existed. But this is what the Hydro Dweevil was called in the original Pikmin 2, which was probably changed because Caustic does not mean water. It basically means acidic. Though the name was changed, the Piclopedia entries were not, so Olimar still references his spacesuit corroding, and Louis calls the Hydro Dweevil inedible. Anyway, telling the Dweevils apart is hard enough, so it was probably best to add that more specific name. It's 
Number 11, the Volatile Dweevil, was an old type of Dweevil in Pikmin 2 that could carry bomb rocks and would try to kill you by blowing themselves up when you came near, literally disintegrating themselves. And the best history is the kind of history that repeats itself, so just like how only yellow Pikmin could carry bomb rocks in Pikmin 1, but all Pikmin could in Pikmin 3, now it is that all Dweevils can pick up bomb rocks in Pikmin 4, thus making the volatile Dweevil completely irrelevant. Number 12, the Titan Dweevil, was the final boss of Pikmin 2 at the bottom of the Dream Den. And though the game's stories mimic each other, Pikmin 2 and Pikmin 4 thankfully do not have the same final boss. And this honestly makes sense because of how upset the fans were when the Emperor Bullblax was brought back as a downgrade in Pikmin 2 from being completely insanely powered in Pikmin 1. They definitely did not want that scenario to be repeated, so they let the unique things of the past stay unique. And if we're talking about the Dream Den, let's talk about other Pikmin 2 cave enemies, starting with... Number 13, the Bumbling Snitchbug. The only other member of the Snitchbug family, other than the famous swooping Snitchbug itself, the Bumbling Snitchbug in Pikmin 2 had the ability to swoop down and pick up exclusively captains, then slam them down for a bit of damage. But if this ability sounds familiar to you, it's because it was given to the swooping Snitchbug in Pikmin 3. And so the Bumbling Snitchbug was rendered pointless. Number 14, the Antenna Beetle. Every Pikmin game has its own mimic of the Pikmin captains themselves and Pikmin 2's version was the Antenna Beetle. It had two main abilities, both of which have been given to separate enemies in Pikmin 4. The first was whistling Pikmin and assembling its own squad, just like Moss does in the Hero's Hideaway, and its second was scrambling the treasure gauge until it was defeated, which was given to the Gildamander boss. Because of these two enemies, particularly Moss, there's a good chance the Antenna Beetle was kept away from the game to avoid repeating the same gimmick. Or the antenna beetle just sucked because it didn't appear in Pigment 3 either. Number 15, the careening Dirigi bug. This was one of my favorite enemies back in Pigment 2 because of how insane it was. This dude used to regurgitate bomb rocks and toss them from the sky at you. Not only do I think the Dirigi bug would be a lot less threatening with Ochi and winged Pikmin on your side, but it was also probably removed due to a cultural shift that happened in Nintendo between the release of these games. Pikmin 2 is not a traditional family-friendly Nintendo game. Explosions were one of the five explicit hazard types back in the day, but they've slowly been phasing them out. An explosion-based enemy hasn't been introduced since Pikmin 2, and in fact, Every single one of them was removed, with the exception of the man at legs returning in Pikmin 4. We saw this earlier with the volatile Dweevil, technically. But there's not really any way to clean up a bomb rock dropping fiend like the careening Dirigi bug though, so sadly, we have to say goodbye. And while we're on the topic, let's talk about number 16, the Gatling Groink, which was also an explosion-based enemy. Pretty much everything that made this enemy what it was is a feature that did not return in Pikmin 4, including the aforementioned explosion enemies, roaming enemies with no boundary limits, and the feature that allowed the Groink to come back to life if its corpse wasn't carried back to the ship fast enough. The spotty bull bear had both the latter abilities in Pikmin 2, but is simply a normal enemy in Pikmin 4, so we can safely assume they're gone with the wind, and thankfully so. But without these three traits, the Groink is basically nothing, so it didn't return. On the opposite end of the spectrum, features that started in Pikmin 2 and were broadened incredibly in Pikmin 4, yet the original does not return. I'm of course talking about the late and great original Wild Pikmin number 17, Boldman both the enemy and Pikmin variety. These guys were essentially glow Pikmin back in Pikmin 2. They were immune to most hazards, but couldn't leave caves. You'd rescue or steal them from a Bulbman parent and add them to your squad, not unlike what we see from wild Pikmin in Pikmin 4. But for some reason, they were left out of the loop here, which means Pikmin 1 and 2 both have exclusive Pikmin slash enemies that never returned. This is honestly a huge bummer, and the only explanation I can think of is that there were already too many types of Pikmin, and they didn't want to confuse new players by reintroducing a Pikmin that, like I said, has very similar powers to the Glow Pikmin. Let's take a moment of silence for the Fallen Soldier. 
Number 18, the decorated cannon larva. This variant of the armored cannon larva, shoot. That might be wrong. Number 18, the armor, no. Number 18, the decorated cannon beetle, which despite the name was a variant of the armored cannon larva, which shot honing boulders that followed your captain around the map. The only reason for its removal that I could think of is that it was super janky and easy to abuse. They usually turned out to be more helpful than harmful as you could easily target other enemies by guiding their boulders into them. It's likely that the decorated cannon beetle just had too specific a skill set for any situation the developers could think of. And now, by far the strangest enemy in any Pikmin game, number 19, the Ujidani. This hard to pronounce enemy is the only enemy from Pikmin 2 not in the Piklopedia. They appear only in the Wistful Wilds as tiny little dots in groups of 70. They're one of the only poisonous enemies in the game and drop heaps of nectar and spray when they are wiped out by your squad. And to make it even stranger, the Ujidani only appear every 30 days starting on day 31. Bottom line, these guys are a crazy rare source of nectar and were probably removed for two reasons we already went over. One, these day-specific appearances were removed starting in Pikmin 3, and two, nectar drops are a lot more common in Pikmin 4. Also, Nintendo may have just forgotten they existed. And we saved the best for last, number 20, unmarked spectralids, which are just spectralids all grouped into the same species before they specified white, yellow, and red. That's, I mean, uh, whatever, it's... And boom, there we go, that's every normal enemy in Pikmin 2 covered. Now onto the real stuff. Honorable mentions. C, the red bulborb was the name of the now simple bulborb in Pikmin 2, and the dwarf red bulborb was the name of the dwarf bulborbs in Pikmin 2. This one is especially odd though, because as far as I can tell, they were just called dwarf bulborbs in the original Pikmin. So the specific red variation is a Pikmin 2 exclusive. I guess. And D, the Armored Cannon Beetle Larva, was renamed the Armored Cannon Larva because you can't be a beetle and a larva at the same time. I think. And now it's time for the bosses. Number 21, the Ranging Bloister from the Shower Room. The Ranging Bloister was a large toady bloister with similar abilities, except it would target the captain you were currently using. So you'd distract with one captain and you'd kill it with the other. Why was the Ranging Bloister removed? Probably because the fight barely functioned in the first place and most of these separate captain mechanics were removed for Pikmin 4, seeing as Ochi and your player character have limited capabilities on their own. And thankfully so, because most of these captain mechanic fights were terrible. I am dead inside. I'll still always hold Pikmin 2 sound design close to my heart though. Number 22, the Pileated Snagret from the Snagret Hole. Some of you may not have known the iconic burrowing Snagret has more than one relative, but baby Snagrets are not the first variation in the series. The Pileated Snagret is an orange version that has the ability to jump out of the ground fully and stomp around on its one massive foot to hunt you and your Pikmin down. Funnily enough, this forgotten boss is most likely the reason the modern Snagret has that foot today. But realistically speaking, the Pileated its snackert was nothing special from its burrowing cousin, so when it came time to make some Pikmin 4 bosses, they decided to just stick with the classic. Number 23, the Raging Long Legs from the Hole of Heroes. Our second member of the Long Legs family to get cut, this was just a chunky version of the Beady Long Legs. That's all it was. Number 24, no, I'm, I'm I'm joking. This version was the second to last boss in the game, which was a bit of a letdown. So it kind of makes sense they scrapped this boss as they did with the B long legs for the much more unique and incredible groovy long legs, simply because there was just nothing that made this boss special and it really wasn't worthy of returning. It is sad though, because if you read Pikmin 2's Piklopedia, Olimar wants to analyze a frozen raging long legs which he could have done in Pikmin 4, but alas, 
lost opportunities. Number 24, the segmented Crobster from the Cavern of Chaos. This behemoth was essentially an upgraded Empress Bullblax that rolled around the arena trying to squash your Pikmin and drop meteors on them. And don't even get me started on that massive claw. To me, this was one of the cooler bosses from Pikmin 2 because of how unique it was, but that same uniqueness probably doomed it when it came to selecting legacy bosses for Pikmin 4. The Cropster is late game at the bottom of a forgettable cave with no relation to any existing enemy or boss, and it doesn't carry any cult icon status like the Man at Legs or Water Wave do. When you think of Pikmin 2 bosses, I imagine a lot of people forget the Cropster, and that's a shame. But what a boss to end out our selection of Pikmin 2 enemies. And before we get into Pikmin 3, let's take a little intermission in order to give you guys time to subscribe to the channel and maybe just maybe consider becoming a channel member it's only 99 cents a month for a bunch of extra bonus content and behind the scenes so consider it but not for too long because it's time for pikmin 3. Number 25, the Medusal Slurker. If you played Pikmin 3, you remember this thing for introducing Rock Pikmin at the beginning of the game. And what happened to the Slurker is the inverse of what happened to the Cloaking Burrownet. Pikmin 2 already had enemies called the Jelly Floats with more variation and honestly, just as average a design. Even though the Slurker family was expanded upon in Hey Pikmin, it wasn't enough to save us from the regression into the Jelly Floats. Number 26, the Spuddlefish. These fish were few and far between in Pikmin 3 and laughably easy to defeat. They were among three new underwater enemies introduced in this game. The Puckering Blinno and Waddlepuss both returned, but the Spuddlefish was replaced by the Pricklepuff, perhaps to match the weird porcupine theme in this game. I don't think anyone is going to mourn the loss of this enemy. It's just one generic fish for another. Number 27, the Nectaris Dandenfly. This creature would roam overhead until you hit it with a single Pikmin when it would disperse its body segments and disappear, leaving only nectar behind. The Dandenfly fit well with the environments of Pikmin 3, but with the reintroduction of caves in Pikmin 4, the developers decided to go back to the Pikmin 2 Honey Wisp for the game's harmless nectar-dropping enemy because the Dandenfly just doesn't belong down there. Number 28, the Swarming Shear Grubs. Thank everything alive, the Swarming Shear Grub didn't make it to Pikmin 4. I hate these guys so much, I'm not even gonna describe them. Okay, I don't know, look it up, look it up or something. Oh, thankfully they did not make it into Pikmin 4, and the world is a better place for it. Yes! Yes! Let's go! Number 28, the Calcified Crushblatt, an enemy that so badly wanted to be a mini boss but never made it. Hello, darkness, my old friend. The Crushblatt was a classic Pikmin 3, let's show off a rock Pikmin feature that was quite convoluted in how you're supposed to fight it, but everyone used bomb rocks anyway. Honestly, I just don't think there was anything that stood out about the Crushblatt. It was kind of ugly, and we already have enough crushing enemies. Mini boss time. Number 30, the Shaggy Long Legs. I've talked a little about the Shaggy Long Legs already, but now we're gonna talk a little bit more. The Shaggy Long Legs was a Baldy Long Legs with extra protection in the form of hair at the joints to its legs. So you have to wait and writhe as your Pikmin slowly crawled up the legs for like 10 minutes. It was boring and kind of gross. But now that it's gone, there is absolutely no reason for the Baldy Long Legs' name, and that's hilarious. Number 31, the Arctic Long Legs. I refuse to believe these are the same enemies. They are not, okay? Bottom line, it gets its own slot. Yeah awaited your comments now. All right, enough with this boring stuff. Let's get to bosses, which none returned. This is probably due to how important these main bosses were to the story of Pikmin 3. There only exists one of each. They're all very unique for the franchise in mechanics and scale, and it would be a disservice to downgrade them to the level of bosses from Pikmin 1, 2, and 4. 
But of course, we'll go over them anyway, just keeping these reasons in mind. Number 32, the Armored Maudad from the Garden of Hope. The Maudad was a solid first boss of the game, but all crystals and crystal enemies with the exception of the Scutter Chuck were removed from Pikmin 4. Number 33, the Vehemoth Fossbat from the Distant Tundra. The Fossbat was the second boss of the game and actually the first ever flying boss in a Pikmin game. However, the mechanic used to defeat it, that being turning on light bulbs, was removed in Pikmin 4, so down it goes as well. Number 34, the Foss Bats. These were baby Vehemoth Foss Bats, but no Vehemoth Foss Bat means no Foss Bats, period. Number 35, the Foss Bat Pod. This is the thing that birthed the Foss Bats? I don't, I don't know. This counts as an enemy on the wiki, so what are you gonna do? Number 36, the Sand Belching Mirror Slug from the Tropical Wilds. The slug was probably also removed because of the uniqueness to his arena, but I'm not sure specifically a reason other than the differences between bosses in Pikmin 3 than in the other games in the franchise that we already explained. Number 37, the Scornet Maestro from the Twilight River. Remember the Antenna Beetle and how each game has its Captain Mimics? Here's the Pikmin 3 version, which conducted an army of 100 100 Scornets. It was very bad though, and maybe the worst boss in Pikmin 3, so it's not gonna be coming back anytime soon. Number 38, the Scornets. Like the baby Foss Bats, the Scornets returning without their leader would just be downright strange. Number 39, the Quaggled Maraclops from the Garden of Hope. One of the most unique and largest bosses in Pikmin, I loved this boss. I also it's thought the new well. creeping chrysanthemum yeah, design was a baby Myroclops, completely the ignoring the fact that it has right. two eyes. So, not a clops of any form. Anyway, for the same reasons as the armored Maudad, this boss did not return. Number 40, the Mysterious Life Form, and number 41, the Plasm Wraith, the two stages of the final boss at the Formidable Oak, and it just wouldn't work to have this boss anywhere else. It's too weird, it's too lore-based, it's too unique, and honestly, very disappointing there's not a new Wraith in Pikmin 4. I think the Water Wraith should have stayed in Pikmin 2. Honestly, controversial opinion. And not related to Pikmin 3 at all. But just like the Titan Dweevil, Thankfully, Pikmin 4 and Pikmin 3 do not have the same final boss. And that wraps up Pikmin 3 with a grand total of 41 enemies that did not return in the franchise, not counting the honorable mentions yet. And if you're satisfied with that, click away, but first, let me name off virtually every Hey Pikmin no, enemy. Olimar, buddy. Cut it out! The only enemies returning from Hey Pikmin into Pikmin 4 are enemies from previous games, like the Fiery Blowhog. And there's a lot of reasons for this, mainly being many of these enemies are replacements for pre-existing enemies, just adapted to the scale and viewpoint of Hey Pikmin. And then, of course, there's the fact that all of these guys were designed as 2D enemies, and it's probably more effort than it's worth to translate them into 3D just to get a little reference in. And thirdly, most of these enemies are absolute garbage. I'm talking to you, Long Water Dumple. Who named this? Who who is who is responsible for this? Anyway, here's all the enemies that didn't return from Hey Pikmin for one reason or another. Number forty-one, Adult Centipede. Number forty-two, Um a Merc. Number 43, Berserk Leech Hydrode. Number 44, Blug Bug. Number 45, Centipair. Number 46, Clicking Slurker. Number 47, Cop Heller. Number 48, Crammed Wraith. Number 49, Crested Makiwi. Number 50, Crumbug. Number 51, Crystalline Crush Black. Number 52, Electric Cottony. Number 53, Electric Spectralid. Number 54, Electropede. Number 55, Elongated Crush Black. Number 56, Eye Stalker Bulbeal. Number 57, Fiery Blowlet. Number 58, Fiery Dwarf Bull Blacks. Number 59, Fiery Young Yellow Wallywog. Number 60, Fire Flat Bull Blorb. Uh, whoops. Number 61, Fire Flinger Groink. Number 62, Fire Snout Beetle. Number 63, Flatter Chuck. Number 64, Flying Spotted Jelly Float. Number 65, Grab It. Number 66, Large Splurchin. Number 67, Leech Hydro. Number 68, Long Water Dumple. Number 69, Luring Slurker. Number 70, Makiwi. Number 71, Mug and Fly. Number 72, Puff Stock. Number 73, Puffy Blub Bug. Number 74, Queen Shearwig. Number 75, Red Bl Bub Blimp. 
Number 76, Seedbagger. Number 77, Sheer Blug. Number 78, Shooting Spiner Female. Number 79, Shooting Spiner Male. Number 80, Sparrowhead. Number 81, Spear Grub. Number 82, Spiny Copeller. Number 83, Spore Grub. Number 84, Spornet. Number 85, Starnacle. Number 86, Stony Flint Beetle. Number 87, Stuffed Bell Bloom. Number 88, Wide Mouth Anno Beetle. Number 89, Young Yellow Wally Wog. That's boosted our total by more than double, so feel free to not count these enemies to your prediction in the comments, unless, of course, you want to be right. And though you may think that's it, we're not done yet, because finally, the last Pikmin game before Pikmin 4, Pikmin 3 Deluxe, features two new enemies that do not return, which would, of course, be number 90. The Goldie Longlegs and number 91, the Blondie Longlegs, names I just made up. Both of these guys appear on the final day of the side story Olimar's comeback, and they're just about as unique as every other member of the Longlegs family, of course, barring the groovy Longlegs. And now we've reached our final honorable mention. Of course, the creeping chrysanthemum, which not only looks different, it also functions completely differently as well. It is an absolute crime that they dare consider these the same enemy. Jeez. Oh my gosh. All in all, honorable mentions included, that's a final total of... 100 enemies. But there you have it, that's that. Our count is complete. Every lost enemy has been compiled into a list so that their legacy might continue on. Well, I really don't have all that much to say at this point other than I hope you all enjoyed this history lesson as much as I did. This is the longest video I have ever made and honestly, it was a lot of fun. That being said, I don't wanna drag it on any longer. So I hope you guys miss these enemies as much as I do, but that is all for now, so I thank you all so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one.